Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at ISP industry from evolution to presence. So let's get started. Really the work on just to get to internet service providers as we see them today, we have to go back a bit of background how we got here. Start of the ISP industry, early days work back in 1970s and 80s till mid 80s, uh, really done by ARPANET. Um, on packet switching um, data networks. Uh, that transition towards the internet really happened when CERN in Europe and uh, and work, they worked on TCP IP model and then later on rise of the uh, rise of the RIPE in, uh, in Janet in Europe and AOL in America really. Uh, more commercial versions of dial-up internet started than based around those days, um, early 90s. So that's where just a bit of background on how we got here through the stages of the internet, how we see it through the evolution from AOL to Janet and RIPE in Europe and CERN and then of course um, ARPANET. In the UK, really the evolution, uh, if you look at it, it's uh, started uh, dial-up uh, dial internet back in um, 1992 by Pipex, the, the first dial-up provider. Uh, broadband initially started uh, from the cable televisions, uh, likes of NTL and Telewest. So the first provider was the, in the UK was NTL. Later, we have this seen this emergence of DSL um, networks in um, 2000 and beyond. Um, so basically using the BT's copper existing network to provide the higher frequency um, uh, DSL um, uh, subscribers line um, kind of thing started and on the cable television side obviously Virgin was the major provider. So at start of the DSL and dial-up um, evolution, uh, the most of the exchanges and local loops were owned by BT. And we see initially that this this was sort of a typical uh, a way of connecting um, the the premises in the UK to to the exchange where we where we look at sort of this diagram. And traditionally, we see that. A, a household or the normal telegraph pole is connected through the duct at the back of the street. So you have the CPE and this is a normal uh, plain old telephone line comes through the ducts and what we um, call a PCP which is a that is a primary connection point and, and you also see uh, these green cabs uh, cabinets in the street. This is where the copper cable comes through the duct and, and terminates Mainly from the primary uh, connection points, you have this uh, back to exchange. Traditionally, used to be before FTTC, uh, where the uh, fiber was brought in from the exchange to the to the cabinet. Really, it was a, a a bundle phone cable that went all the way up to the exchange and connected into the main distribution frame, and from there on. Uh, we looked at uh, things like uh, DSLAM uh, to, to give a digital access multiplexer and MSAN later on to provide the broadband uh, in the households in the UK. This, this sort of was a hybrid model based on uh, both the, uh, the dial-up and, and, the, um, and the broadband initially in, in the UK and that's owned by main, mainly BT. If we come back to exchanges, uh, we see that, uh, you know, if we look at the from end user point of view, here we see that uh, the the home user device is connected via a, a DSL modem. So you have the IP side and, you know, here we have the splitter uh, that splits the line into two frequencies into a a DSL high, uh, high frequency and normal analog frequency and then that's how we get this. Still the traditionally by and large the main broadbands are still connected like that where they through the access switch go back into the exchange into the BRAS where the provider's radius looks at uh, the, the authentication and then 
if if there is uh, any data is for the partner internet it is passed on over the link to the partner i mean obviously if it's local then the the voice breakout breakout is through pstn uh, pstn still is a sort of a um, a large part of uh, uk networks although um, the voip and uh, and digital revolution is not taking over but there is a great deal of still plain, plain old bt and telephone networks that still exist so it just gives just a bit of overview how and um, the broadband and uh, and data networks are sort of uh, connected in in the uk in early days and still to extent uh, still this model is in place so then we see really the evolution happens in sort of a past you know um, after the ofcom regulations appear at the start of you know llu where the uh, the bt has been basically forced to to allow other providers to to use the exchanges um, and that's what we call the local loop unbundling of uh, a terminology of llu and that's where the llu providers like the easynet was the very first one and then easynet was bought by by the sky in 2010 talk talk also emerged back in the days um from um, as one of the main um, the um, unbundling provider of the bt networks that including the broadband network and uh, ee uh, also um appeared uh, after we uh, there was a merger of a t mobile and orange um in the uk and ee was later acquired by bt if we look at the cable uh, modem side virgin media that was uh, a brand um, emerged out of ntl televest uh, um, merger and uh, it operates under uh, liberty global currently a brand of virgin that is one of the biggest or uh, the biggest uh, cable tv provider uh, broadband over coaxial still in the uk so talking about uh, llu market when the bt's um, exchanges were allowed to be unbundled and used by the other competitors and uh, wholesale providers so that market uh, currently as it stands um, talk talk is the largest um, llu provider in the uk followed by sky and then ee and then vodafone and finally one of the small one is um, zen internet but if we look at the total market share in the uk of the the broadband and that's combined both the bt type and um the uh, cable tv uh, bt is the largest provider in uk followed by sky then virgin media which is wholly a cable tv um network that is um number 3 and talk talk through mainly the a uh, network of the llu uh, is at number 4 and finally we have vodafone's uh, market share at number 5 in the uk broadband market uk isp from broadband technology progression happened through adsl to adsl2 and then ftc means that the fiber to the cabinet and now we see and uh, the the latest uh, trend of uh, fiber to the premises and that is fttp the other technologies emerge during uh, during the evolution of broadband was uh, fixed wireless access and uh, some of the wisp um, broadband providers came up as well on the lte mobile side uh, the evolution uh, from 3g to 4g and now we are into the 5g initially at the time of uh, uh, in the uk of a, of a lte mobile broadband ee was leading but now you know followed by o- vodafone and o2 at the time and as currently we stand obviously the other providers have um, have a larger share of market in terms of uh, technology progression in the uk isp and what we have um, gone through so bt and llu providers uh, traditionally uh, as i said used a copper uh, network initially then obviously the, the broadband variations of um, sitting on uh, 
on a copper as a as a main transport with the IP stream, then FTTC and to FTTP, and obviously other um, technologies were used to to construct the um, the broadband was DSLAM and and, and AMSAN. The authentication and uh, you know delivery method used in the broadbands were mainly PPPoE as the IP network, as the um, as end user was encapsulated over the ATM network, across using PPPoE and PPPoA over ATM and mainly the radius and etc. Uh, are still used in the in the broadband network. L2TP and IPMPLS are the major. Uh, part of the of the networks in in terms of a uh, core and delivery if we look at the virgin media that's uh, mainly a coax fiber it's a it's a hybrid fi um, hybrid fiber um, coax fiber network and it uses a doxis um, network basically means the data over cable service um, interface specification and it's really cable modem terminal systems, uh, CMTS, that's been used in the cable modem industry in the US and UK um, for since the evolution of cable modem. And that's where uh, Virgin Media stands. And they, they with the latest DOCSIS 3.1, would allow um, a speed of what up to one gig to the premises to competing with some of the emerging um, FTTP providers. IPMPLS is also been a main part of the uh, the cause of Virgin Media, and obviously recently we see the revolution of SDN coming into the service providers uh, market in terms of SD WAN and uh, public cloud and etc. On the FTTP side, we've seen the fiber to premises um, uh, network emer emergence, uh, likes of big players like of City Fiber as as emerged in recent years. And fiber to the premises mainly delivered using uh, GPON and uh, XGS PON, and some of the fixed wireless providers have also um, appeared along with that. Ethernet and uh, uh, is a main delivery format over GPON and uh, DHCP and IP, IPOE are the formats that are used. We're going to continue our discussion of, of the, uh, the ISP technology revolution in the UK and history in our next video. So thank you for watching. I look forward to see you in the next video.